Hello everyone, it's your host and conductor of the American Rail Club, Demetrius Villa, here for another episode and we're going to talk about a couple things today. We're going to talk about the Shinkansen going for a swim. We're talking about Virgin Trains also going for a swim, but staying on the dock. And we're also talking about the girl who's invented a new version of the Hyperloop that audiences and the news are lauding across the nation. So we got a lot we're going to talk about over here. So let's get right to it as well as talking about some channel updates as well afterwards. So strap into your seats and enjoy the ride. So the Hokuriku Shinkansen is resuming full service. Um, it started full service um, a little bit uh, at the end of last month in October um, after Typhoon Hagibis, I believe that's how it's pronounced, it's not a Japanese name, but after it completely battered the central coast of Japan, the central uh, part of the country, I mean, there are factories that are flooded up that are going to be out of commission for months. There's whole, uh, there's whole towns and cities that are, you know, going to be flooded up af um, and the cleanup effort is still going on. So there's a lot of damage that is coming from this especially with the Shinkansen as well. So as you can see, yeah, um, that's just, this is what happened to the Shinkansen. So they're saying 90% uh, of its bullet trains on Friday are going to going back into operation. And you may be asking, well, what happened to the other 10%? Um, there they are, they're about three feet underwater, uh, unfortunately. So that's what happened, so 14 of them uh, it says uh, the number of trains will be reduced by 14 to 104. That's not a reduction. I guess they're saying 104 to... Uh, I guess they're reducing 14 of them because 14 of them got flooded because of this. So, yeah, they're completely ruined because of this. Their electrics, motors, the underfloor, all that suspension, everything is completely shot because of this. So that's a lot of money as well because they're saying... Um, again, this was the Hokuriku Shinkansen bullet trains that were flooded by heavy rains caused by Typhoon Hagibis, seen in the central Japan city of Nagano on the evening on November 6, 2019. East Japan Railway co-president Yuji Fukusawa announced at a November 6 press conference that the firm would scrap its eight flooded trains that were previously valued at 11.8 billion yen. So let's just do a little bit of math there. 11.8 billion yen is about a hundred and seven million dollars so that's that's a lot of money for um, these trains again oh so it's eight flooded trains that are not 14 I guess they're keeping uh, a couple of others for something called six extra for I don't know what so eight flooded trains um, and also plans to discard its two flooded bullet trains so that all ten submerged in constant will be scrapped so again that's a lot of money and again, you can see over here what it looks like. So again, these these trains are again. That's that's it's about up to here to the the headlights. So yeah, it's about that's about three or four feet. Just a good guesstimate about it. So that's that's a lot of flooding. Again, the wheels are completely submerged. It's probably gone into the interior as well as you can see. It's, the water was probably higher um, before this picture was taken. So a lot of damage. Um, it's a lot of it's probably seawater, so the salt has basically corroded it. It's it's done for. Uh, so you can see over here. So the Shinkansen cars cost about 300 million yen to make. Uh, so you can put that in American dollars. Let's go ahead and put 300 million Low yen. Low battery. That's about 2.7 million dollars. Uh, I gotta apologize because that's my home phone saying it's got low battery because I keep it here half the time uh, just in case somebody calls. But yeah, that's 2.7 million dollars and when you really think about that, that's that's not that much for a train when some of these projects come up. I mean, we could probably afford some of these to bring them over here. So again, let me know what you think in the comments below about what's happened in Japan. And by all means, if you, you know, the Red Cross and some other organizations are looking for donations to help out the citizens over there get back on their feet um i've also done so as at work so if you have any time or you know any little bit extra to go ahead and pitch in for the japanese to help them get back on your feet um you're more than welcome to do so 
All right, so let's get on to the next story over here. We're talking about Virgin Trains USA now going to the port of Miami. So, and they also mentioned in this article while leaving Port Canaveral behind. Now, do know that Virgin, the company, uh, the Virgin Group is going to be also opening a new cruise line, Virgin Voyages. So you can see over here what's going to look like. Again, um, it makes sense for them to be able to do that. Um, to be able to get the trains over to the port because that's that's where the trains are going. Why would they go to Port Canaveral when their uh, their ships are coming out from Port of Miami? So it's going to be pretty good, um, and it's going to happen again. So they're already building up from West Palm Beach to Orlando. They're going to open a stop over at Disney as well after that, or that is planned. Hopefully that could happen, and then to Tampa as well. So again. Miami for a lot of them West Palm Beach are already running so and this is a good thing that has happened so far in the state I've driven I've gone on Virgin trains a couple of times as well in the past um, I've helped that company to come up as well through advocacy especially getting the younger crowd to get onto it uh, I've been involved in a couple of commission meetings uh, a lot of you know city planning meetings and all that so again I've been following this whole entire project since the beginning and it's been years and years in the making and we're finally seeing the fruits of its labor f coming into fruition and also what's going to happen in the future because this is incredible for the rest of the state and for the country as well to actually see a private company building well it's not technically high speed but it is higher speed rail uh, of express passenger line to connect these city centers so again, they're also going to moving um, as well to make also stations in places like Cocoa Beach um, and other places around um, as well as Aventura, as we just heard in the news as well. They will be building a station in Aventura. They just got that uh, already approved. So again, um, they're already moving ahead to do um, intercity and urban line rails as well to their express line. So what does that mean? Um, the city of Miami is really trying to pressure um, its own <laughs> railroad, railroad uh, tri-rail, which is again run by the South Florida Rail Transit Administration, to extend into other neighborhoods because they already know that well, Virgin Trains is already going ahead of us and doing this as well. This is already in the plans for years to um, sort of use tri-rail as the commuter rail along the same lines as Virgin Trains. But because this is now happening with Virgin Trains, they're already going ahead and saying, you know what, it's taking too long for them. We're just going to go ahead and, you know, take the Aventura station. We're going to take the station in Cocoa Beach. We're going to take the station in other places as well. Uh, Boca Raton and whatnot, so they're leaving money on the table. We might as well just take it for ourselves. So tri is like, wait, we, you know, we're we're planning something. We're gonna do it. They're just not gonna do it. Uh, there, this again, more pressure is coming on them to actually make this happen. And we see here Commissioner Suarez and also Mayor Suarez. Again, it's it's father and son duo over here in Miami, uh, kind of running the show. Uh, but they've been very pro-transit, and I remember meeting with them a couple of times, so things have been going a lot better and moving smoother for getting projects that actually work to get this done. So that's why Virgin Trains has been able to also move ahead. So again, government and private companies can work together to make things happen for everybody, and I'm sure this is what we need more of as well in the future. So let's get to the next sta station right over here. We're going to talk about this 13-year-old girl. That's the Hyperloop. All week, I've been getting updates about this. About this 13-year-old girl who has invented a more viable solution than Elon Musk's Hyperloop. Look at this. The media just laps this up. 13-year-old girl just invented a train. 13-year-old scientist may have designed a better version. 13-year-old girl invents. 13-year-old girl just invented. All over the place. Everywhere. In Google. 13-year-old girl just invented. May have designed. 13 year old girl invented. 13 year old girl invents. 13 year old girl invents. 13 year old girl Elon Musk fan came up with a green or a hype loop. It's all over the place. Again, I've already discussed the media and its 
uh, complete bias to what is going on and to their own stupidity and lack of research and scientific knowledge, uh, basic scientific knowledge into how the Hyperloop would actually work. So again, I was looking at CNN. This is this is the design that this 13 year old girl came up with. Again, I'm not I'm not bashing her or anything like that. I think it's great that she came up with an idea, just like I came up with an idea this week. I'm like, you know what? I have a car that has a cassette tape player. I wish I could just be able to have a Bluetooth cassette tape player uh, to just connect a little cassette tape player with a battery in it and then there, but it was already invented, so I couldn't really get that patent. That's what you need for uh, invention. You need a patent before you invent uh, or say you invented anything. But when you look at it, again, this is her uh, little design or whatnot, and little... Shinkansen, gee, I have a couple of those as well, a little Dr. Yellow uh, model Shinkansen. But you can see, she's saying here, my design can rely on 100% renewable energy, so it eliminates the need for a diesel engine or an electric motor. But what is this that she invented? Well, it's basically an atmospheric railroad. So her idea is to build pneumatic tubes next to existing train tracks, which would make high-speed travel cheaper. So I'm pretty sure you don't need an electric motor or a diesel engine on the train. But what's running the pneumatic tube? How is the air pushing this in and out? So again, the media has not mentioned anything what I'm about to say. There has been a couple of YouTubers who have, and I will also mention them as well. But this has already happened, guys. <laughs> this has happened in the 19th century. Again, I made this in the Hyperloop video that I did of debunking it. The Hyperloop is basically a dead zombie at this point, but this was already invented in the 19th century. Just like the Hyperloop with the beach pneumatic tube transit in New York, this was already done before in the British Isles. So this is the Dalkey Atmospheric Railway. This was uh, the Dublin and Southeastern Railway. This is the first of its kind. Again, running on a tube. There's the train. There is a tube. The train doesn't have its own motive power, it's just connected to a rod or some sort of uh, bearing that's being pushed by air. That is what an atmospheric tube is. And probably the most uh, known example of it was invented by this guy, Eisenbart Kingdom Bruno. That is a badass name if I ever heard of one. Look at this guy, I mean he's got, he's got like chains all over. That's a, that's a, that's a badass picture. <laughs> Look at that. But this was the guy that was probably best well known um, for it. And again, he's a very well known um, railroad mogul in British history. Uh, but again, he's is well known for having the, the Bruno broad gauge um, railroad standard uh, that hadn't really caught on. And also the Brunel Atmospheric Railway. So again, this has been already invented all over the place. It's not new. There's one moving in uh, Indonesia. So again, this is this is not new. This is not newly invented. I'm pretty sure the girl didn't really look it up or anything like that. If she did, probably would have seen it. And if she's, you know, putting it out there and she already knew about it, um, the media is retarded. As we already know, they're <laughs> low IQ people out there that don't know what they're talking about. They don't they can't even do simple research. They just want, wow, look what she did. They can't even search up atmospheric railway. How can you trust the media when they do this? Again, this this exists over here. This was already done. This is the, the Brunel Railroad, which is probably the most well-known example, which was done back in the 19th century. Again, this is nothing new. I find this funny. Screwgirl believes she's Eisenbard Brunel reincarnated. Um, this was back in the 50s where this uh, headline came up. Uh, maybe it's this girl? Uh, <laughs> could it be her, the reincarnation that has just come up? We will never know. But yeah, this is this is complete bunk. This is crap, uh, what the media is doing. Not the girl. I'm glad that she's thinking of stuff and inventing it. We do need more people, millennials and Zoomers, to actually be getting more involved in technology and STEM to get this going. But yeah, this was already done. I do recommend, and I'll put a link below. Again, all these links I will put in the video so you guys can be able to see. This was done by... EEV blog. Um, he also commented on my uh, video as well, but the Hyperloop video, commenting about that. But he talks about atmospheric railways and the Hyperloop. And again, this is stuff that is has already happened. 
So I will also be coming out with another video later on, probably this coming week, about the death of the Hyperloop because it does need to be done uh, to kind of put this thing to rest. I know people have been asking me more info about this and every single time I get asked on the street about the Hyperloop, I just direct people to the video and then when they see the half a million views, they're like, oh, okay. So yeah, that video has been going around really starting to wake up people. And I think this is where we're starting to see this, this vaporware, this is, it's what it is. It's vaporware, um, finally start crashing down hopefully because it's a terrible, terrible waste of time, waste of money. It is distracting us from real solutions. It is not going to work the way it is being intended. It is, I mean, it's, it's, it's awful what's going on that the media is pushing this but not pushing real solutions that have already been made like maglev, okay? Which is a heck of a lot faster already and it's already invented. But you let me know in the comments below what you think. You may disagree with me, you may agree with me. Let me know, we'll talk about it in the comments below. So, let's talk about the channel update. So, again, for those of you who do not know, I've gotten a, a more stable job at this point, so I will start putting out more videos now that I can be able to do that. Um, so, that's, that's been working out so well, um, so far so good. Uh, working at a very good company now. Uh, so let's talk about some other things. Discord. So we're trying to get some more people onto Discord channel. Uh, we got Transport Central that's being run on Discord. So I encourage you, especially the younger generation, <laughs> to get on Discord because Facebook at this point is, uh, yeah. Um, so again, that's why I'm mentioning it over here on YouTube and not on Facebook because you're gonna get um, a certain group of folks that are gonna be like, how do I operate the Discord and get on the Discord and talk about uh, talk about my steam trains and California's gonna work at some point, right? California's gonna work. California's gonna work. So we're, we're moving, we're moving on. We gotta get our own audience, our own, uh, our own generation to get moving into this. So. That's what we're going to do. Speaking of that, I'm also going to start a second channel as well to talk about a little bit more uh, personal stuff, probably do some gaming, that type of stuff. Talk about industry-wide uh, economics, other type of things. So it's going to be more of a variety channel, but again, it's going to be not the American Rail Club. It's going to be more based on what I'm doing. So I'll also be putting a link to my channel. It's Demetrius Via. It's, that's all it is. So. Again, I probably will rename it to just Demetrius uh, on YouTube or something like that. But again, uh, we're going to have two channels at this point, but the American Rail Club is going to be where all the rail stuff is going to be. And then my personal channel is where like personal stuff is going to be. Yeah, but we're getting the, the room done and everything like that. I got this poster for my birthday from my girlfriend. Look at this. This is pretty cool. I love this stuff. So it's got like all these historical trains from, from Britain or Germany. Uh, you got the ICE, you got the Nozomi Express over here. I just gotta go ahead and put a, get a picture frame to put that up on top so we can have it right here on back. So we're gonna have like a nice complete room so I can be able to do more streaming, I can be able to do more videos and get that done quickly. Again, leave in the comments below, what do you think of the stories about the Shinkansen getting flooded over here, going for a swim, about Virgin Trains going to the port of Miami, and also the 13-year-old girl who has invented a new Hyperloop. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe and ring that bell to keep getting more updates on the American Rail Club, and we'll hope to see you all next time. Thank you for writing. Take care.